at Citizens Bank Park. The Astros and Phillies in game two of a three-game set, and Brad Peacock will take the mound as he tries to help the Astros bounce back from a tough 15-inning. Wait a minute. Are y'all? I'm over here. Oh, the fanatic trying to steal the spotlight. Don't go anywhere. Astros baseball is coming right up. <laughs> Live from Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, CSN Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight, it's game two of this three-game series with the Astros meeting the Philadelphia Phillies. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Alan Ashby. 15 innings tonight. What do you think? No, I don't want to do 15, Brownie. <laughs> I, ha I had that last night, and I've had enough of that for a while. Julia Morales is here as well. The Phillies beat the Astros in the 15th last night, 2-1. to one. Now we look at the re-entry into the rotation of Brad Peacock with the trade of Jared Kozart, and we look at what the other four guys have been doing lately. Well, Brad Peacock has had some rough starts recently, but the other guys have been quite good. Brad Oberholzer, Dallas Keuchel, Colin McHugh, and Scott Feldman, who has been really good the last couple of starts. We saw Keuchel last night. That's three straight strong ones for him. Brett Oberholzer is re-emerging as one of the fine starters. And Colin McHugh looks like he's healthy and in that one start since returning to the rotation, very sharp. Brad Peacock has had a rough July, but let's turn back the clock a few months, Ash. Well, if you turn it back to May, Brad Peacock was really good. The combination of May and June, the numbers look very nice. 357 ERA, the opponent's batting average down where you'd like to keep it. He was throwing strikes, and I think that's the big key. Brad Peacock with the fastball here in recent times has just gotten lost. He's gotten to a point where you wonder if he's even going to hit the catcher. And so it's kind of a rough spell right now. And when the you look at the last two starts, four innings, nine hits, eight earned runs, and four homers in that span, not good. Coming up, ebb and flow. The Philly Fanatic and Ryan Howard had their way against the Astros in a marathon game last night. Can the Astros find their inner Rocky and liberate their bats to even the series? Lineups and first pitch are straight ahead. Houston Astros baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is presented by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box for the new Jalapeno Ranch or BBQ Ultimate Cheeseburgers at participating restaurants. All right, very good, sir. Test one, two, three, yes.
Raiders are celebrating that this year, opening up on April 2004. They used to play at Veterans Stadium just across the way. One of the cool features there was the Philadelphia Baseball Wall of Fame. But as you see behind me, it's made its way over when the team did back in 2004. A very, very cool thing to see if you're ever at this ballpark. Some great names they've been inducting since 1978, including Richie Ashburn, who not only a player, but a great broadcaster, too. They've, they've inducted managers, broadcasters, as I said, and, of course, some great players. Larry Boa, part of the Phillies coaching staff right now. Mike Schmidt, Kurt Simmons, Dick Allen. These names just go on. Tug McGraw. These aren't just Wall of Famers, too. Some of these guys are Hall of Famers. I've mentioned a couple of them. And in 1983, they didn't induct one player. They actually inducted the Phillies Centennial team. And look at the names on that. Some great ones. Bob Boone, Dallas Green, Mike Schmidt, Larry Boa, Pete Rose. This is an absolute must-see if you come to this ballpark. And with that, I'm going to send it up to you guys in the booth, Brownie and Ash. Thanks, Julia. 24-year-old right-hander David Buchanan has been warming up, and he is set to go. He was just a recall from the minor leagues, but he has been here for 10 major league starts this season. He's 5-5 five and five with a 4.40 ERA, and Jose Altuve is the first man to face him. Altuve is the major league leader in hits. And there's a line drive hit to open this game on the very first offering from Buchanan. Hit number 157 for Jose Altuve. Here's the starting lineup now, and it's brought to you by Jack in the Box. Bo Porter has gone with Altuve, the leadoff man at second base, with Robbie Grossman in right field, Chris Carter in left, John Singleton at first base, Matt Dominguez at third, Carlos Corper in the catcher, Jake Marisnik in center field, Gregorio Petit at shortstop, and Brad Peacock is his pitcher. That's a five game hitting streak now for Altuve. He's aboard for Robbie Grossman. Robbie won for five last night, and he takes it for strike one at 89 miles per hour. At a 195 average, four homers, 21 runs batted in. He has been on the rise. He's had a 393 on base average in his 22 games since his most recent call up from Oklahoma City. He hits one sharply out to right center field. And that ball is caught on the run by Marlon Bird for out number one. That ball was laced. Wasn't sure Marlon Bird had the jump on this. He needed as he crossed through the sunlight. He was able to finally pick up the baseball and make a fine play. But initially the jump didn't look like it was all there. Buchanan five and five and ten major league starts. Only 17 walks in 59 and a third innings, 39 strikeouts. He was drafted by the Phillies in 2010 in the seventh round. Chris Carter's the batter. Altuve takes off. Here's the throw from the catcher, Nieves, not in time. A steal for Altuve. The major league of the American League leader in steals has 45 now. Jose Altuve, by the way, started the night with a 12 hit lead over second place Melky Cabrera. And he's added to that, and he continues to add in this category as well. Boy, he gets a nice, quick turn and jump, and he's in full stride a step or two into that run. And now Carter takes that pitch is down, and it's a one ball, one strike count to Chris. Chris leading the club in homers with 22 and runs batted in with 53. Tries to drive in Altuve with 45 steals. The club record is 65, set by Gerald Young. And it's a two ball one strike count Altuve has a club record success rate going for steals 88 percent of the time he's been successful 216 for Carter John Singleton's on deck beautiful night here in Philly that's a shot on a line to left field Altuve comes to third stop sign from Pat Listash the throw comes back in from Grady Sizemore and it's first and third one out on the Carter single. Chris Carter continues with that nice short stroke, driving this line drive immediately off the bat into left field. Hits it so sharply that Altuve simply can't score from second base. Very nice watching Chris with this stroke. There have been three well hit balls in this inning by three Astros hitters. Bringing up John Singleton, who came up with the Phillies and then was traded to the Astros in the Hunter Pence deal. At 195, he has 10 homers, 31 runs batted in. Last night was his first game here at Citizens Bank Park. And he singled in the only run the Astros scored in the seventh inning last night. He also drew a walk. 
The shift is on, and there's strike one from Buchanan. Buchanan's from Atlanta. Went to Georgia State University and junior college as well in Florida. Last year he was at Triple A Lehigh Valley and Double A Reading. That pitch outside that makes it one and one to John Singleton. The Astros haven't had this many homers by a rookie first baseman, 10 in a season since Jeff Bagwell hit 14 in 91. Lance Berkman came up as an outfielder. The pitch is off the plate. That makes it two and one to Singleton. The Astros with a very frustrating night last night were held to six hits and one run in 15 innings. And they struck out 17 times in that game. Foul back. It's two and two. It only took five hours and five minutes, Ash. I was keenly aware, too. And when you offered me that uh, chance again tonight, I, I think I'll opt for nine innings. Pitching was just too good. Nobody could break through. Well, Dallas Keuchel, uh, in fact, both starters last night, very good. They had a nice pace going. But once it got beyond the starters, it just seemed like neither offense had anything going. Now it's a full count on Singleton. The Astros as a team are hitting 233 with runners in scoring position. Last night they were one for six. They'd love to have Singleton come through right now. Get an early run for Brad Peacock. Both these pitchers have been returned to the major league clubs from the minor leagues for this start. Ground ball Ryan Howard lets it go to Chase Utley. He goes to second for the force play and the run scores to make it one to nothing. Singleton gets his 32nd run batted in on the slow hopper. Altuve scores. Carter's forced out from four to six. Well, there's that statistically very important first run of the ball game. That club that uh, picks up the first run has a great percentage of winning on the course of the year. And it happens because John Singleton able to hustle it out. Put that ball in play. You talked about the 17 strikeouts last night. Crucial to be able to put something on the ground at the very least when you've got a man on third and less than two outs. Strike one to Matt Dominguez with 13 homers, 47 runs batted in. He checks in with a 229 batting average. Matt had a single in last night's game, then a couple of frustrating at bats after that, and he made an error. So a tough night for Matt trying to. Get things started well tonight in this first at bat. He has a 1 1 count. When the Astros score first in a game this year, Ash, their record is 33 and 18. Pretty standard stat around Major League Baseball. I'm not sure why it holds up that way. One and two. Can't draw large logic into why a run in the first inning. Can have that kind of an impact on a ball game. I don't know if it changes the way clubs go at the remainder of the game. Well, they have come out aggressive and hitting ropes in this first inning. Although the run scored on a slowly hit grounder. That's a shot and that's a one hopper. Cody Ashey turns it into out number three. The Astros settle for a run on two hits. They leave a man and they draw first blood.
Philadelphia Phillies come up against Brad Peacock. Just returned to the 25 man roster to face this starting lineup. Center fielder Ben Revere, shortstop Jimmy Rollins, second baseman Chase Utley, first baseman Ryan Howard, right fielder Marlon Bird, left fielder Grady Sizemore, catcher Will Nieves, third baseman Cody Ashey, pitcher David Buchanan. On the mound for the Astros tonight, right hander Brad Peacock returning to the club. He's 26 years of age, 3 and 7 on the year, ERA just under the 5 mark. Last couple of starts, hideous for Brad. I, I, I think is the only way you can say it. Two starts back, just a third of an inning. He allowed only one run in that one, but then against the Oakland A's in Oakland, 3 and 2 thirds, 7 hits, 7 earned runs, and walked 5 in that one, and the command of the fastball totally off. Ben Revere is the first man to face him. Revere has the seventh best batting average in the National League, 303. First pitch is ball one to Revere. With one homer, 13 runs batted in. He can be a spark plug. Has 30 stolen bases in 34 attempts. Peacock hits the strike zone there, and it's one and one. Fastball command is what Bo Porter answered when asked what he's looking for from Brad Peacock tonight. That's a line drive hit to left field and Revere starts the game for the Phillies the way Altuve did for the Astros. Defensively for the Astros this evening. In the outfield left to right Chris Carter gets that start again in left. Jake Marisnik in center field and Robbie Grossman in right on the infield left side. Matt Dominguez and Gregorio Petit tonight. On the right it's Jose Altuve and John Singleton. Carlos Copron gets the start behind the plate as Jason Castro worked 15 last night. Jimmy Rollins, who was 0 for 7 in a long night last night, Cubs up now with a team overshifting. The Astros with three players between first and second base on Rollins. And he's late on the fastball at strike one. Rollins begins the night at 239. He's had a pretty good year in homers with 15. He's driven in 49. But the batting average and on base average, not what Jimmy Rollins would like to see. Jimmy's 35 now. That's in for a strike, and it seems as if the game plan is to establish that fastball. Well, it's nice seeing Brad throw some strikes with the fastball. At some point, he's going to have to adjust, you would think, anyway, at 92 93 on the heater. Chase Utley's on deck. That's top foul past Juan Samuel, the first base coach, to keep the count at 0 and 2. Look, I get game plans, especially when the last couple of starts, Peacock could not throw the fastball anywhere near the strike zone. So you've got to come out and establish it somehow. But at the same time, you have to eventually pitch, and we'll see how that works out for Brad. It's a line shot and a fair ball. And it kicks out toward Robbie Grossman. Rollins hustling into second base. He rips the 0-2 pitch for his 19th double of the year, getting Revere to third with nobody out. Baseball's a strange game. Sometimes as a pitcher you can make a good quality pitch and have the outcome not be all that good. This appeared to be a slider. And yes, it is that slider with the effort to come down and in. Didn't quite get it down enough. And Jimmy Rollins makes him pay. And ball looked like it might have tipped the glove of John Singleton. Now Peacock in the immediate jam has had first inning problems in recent starts. 476 doubles for the Phillies all-time leader. Rollins sets it up for Chase Utley. Utley with a 279 average, nine homers, 56 runs batted in, has hit under 100 his last 10 days. He was one for four and drew three walks last night. The Astros overshift toward right on him, and they play the infield back, except for Dominguez. Now Petit is coming more to his right. And even further toward his right. As he's being moved from the bench, Pat Listash. There's ball one to Utley, and there's the way the infield looks now. And we saw Chase Utley last night take a pitch away and line it into left field. 
He has seven hits in his last 13 at bats with runners in scoring position. And for the season, he's a 295 hitter with men in scoring position, second best on the Phillies club. Their club is 11th in runs scored in the National League. The Astros are 12th in runs scored in the American League. Ryan Howard's on deck. Punched in the air and towards shallow left field. Chris Carter comes in and near the line he has it and it's too shallow to send the runner Revere from third base. One big out for Peacock. Kind of a dangerous situation with that pop fly down the line that left both Matt Dominguez and Gregorio Petit going out. It left no cutoff man for Carter to just simply get the ball back into. Now Ryan Howard, who was the big man last night, driving in both Phillies runs at 217 as 17 homers. He's driven in 65. He's in the top six and runs batted in in the National League. Once again, the overshift is on for Howard. And Peacock misses. Howard hit a homer for the Phillies first run last night then the game winner was on a 15th inning single off loser Jake Buchanan. The homer came off Dallas Keuchel. He rockets this one to left center field and that one will bounce and stay in play. A couple of runs will score. Here's Petit scooping up the throw on one bounce and it's two to one Phillies. Howard drives in two more to give him 67 and the Phillies lead it two to one. We saw Howard Homer last night. He hit to left center field, takes this fastball down around the knees and drives it to left center field. I think we've got a bit of a trend there. And even with, as you say, Brownie, the, the rough year for Ryan Howard, he's still a guy that will drive in runs. Yeah, and he hit that ball to left center. That's where his home run went last night. He can thump the ball in that direction of the ballpark. Marlon Byrd has driven in 63. Three hits for the Phillies, and they're on the board with a couple early. Byrd takes ball one. Byrd at 269 has 21 homers, 63 runs batted in, and he's seventh in total bases in the National League as well. Peacock has one previous appearance against the Phillies. It was uh, before this year, and he had a win here at Citizens Bank Park. Pitched scoreless ball for five and two thirds innings. One ball, one strike. That would make sense because this is the Astros' only trip to Philadelphia this season. Boy, have they struggled against the teams in the NL East. They are one and ten. Cole Porter may not be aware of that stat, but he probably is aware that they have not hit against these clubs in the NL East. 262 with. Men in scoring position for Marlon Bird. I can only see that as a quirk of the schedule. I, if there's something logical there, I, I'm not not uh, pinning it down. That's for sure. It's two and one. Well, with the trade of Jared Cozart, of course, to Miami, that opened up a spot in the rotation. Brad Peacock, who had been sent. Back to Triple A Oklahoma City now gets a chance to fill that spot, making his 16th start of the year for the Astros. Off the plate with a breaking pitch, and it's a three ball, one strike count now for Peacock. Peacock got the win for Oklahoma City, 7 to 3 over Round Rock. In his last start on the 29th of July. In the dirt and Marlon Bird takes a walk. So four of the five batters who have come to the plate have reached for the Phillies here in the first inning. And Brent Strom is coming out. Well encouraging that in the sense that Peacock is finding the strike zone more consistently but. 
discouraging that when he does find the strike zone, the, the Phillies are laying the bat to it. After the game last night, Paul Clemens was optioned back to Triple A Oklahoma City to make room for Brad Peacock. Jake Buchanan, who went long distance as pitcher number six, worked three and two thirds innings in relief and took the loss. He threw 69 pitches. He is thought to be the only Astros reliever who is unavailable tonight, and that leaves them with no long man for this game. 61% strikes for Brad Peacock, fifth lowest in the American League. So it's on Brad to figure this out here in the first inning. Well, that's not an optimal situation with the struggles that Brad Peacock has had. Grady Sizemore, the left fielder, has started the season with Boston. And at 254, has three homers, 20 runs batted in. As a Philly, though, he's hit 347 in 75 at bats. And that is strike one. Mark Carlson's the home plate umpire. Will Nieves on deck. Sizemore had a couple of hits in last night's game and four at bats. Now it's one and one to size more. Phillies had lost eight straight in interleague play until they won the game last night. They're two and eight against the American League clubs. The Astros are four and eleven against the National League teams. Off speed pitch sails outside. That makes it two and one to size more. Sandberg's club and he was a 20th round pick by the Phillies in 78 saddled with a bunch of aging players now off the plate inside that makes it three and one and when you're struggling a bit you can't get a call when you feel like you've delivered a good pitch to a corner Sizemore lifts one outside the left field line. Chris Carter's coming over, but that one is going to be boxed around by a guy with a glove. Ash, what's going on here? You know, as a fan, you don't want to come to the ballpark with your glove and expose yourself like that. If you've got good hands, bring the glove. If you don't, just leave it home. Understandable if you don't have a glove and you fail to make the catch. Oh. Now I'm not sure he called that play but uh, he was certainly left with the play to make. Still has a smile on his face. And on three two it's ball four so now Sizemore walks the bases are loaded for Nieves. Well that's not the kind of start that Brent Strong and Bull Porter wanted to see. Starts out with strikes being thrown, but balls being laced, and then suddenly a couple of walks. Will Nieves, the 36 year old backup catcher, is four for 25 in his career with the bases loaded. He had a right thigh injury and spent some time on the shelf. Bases loaded, one out for Nieves. Carlos Ruiz caught the entire game last night. As did Jason Castro. That's a shot deep toward the right field corner. Robbie Grossman running way back into that corner. It's a foul ball. And had he caught it, it would have been an easy sack fly. Instead, it's a long strike one. Robbie had that wall down the right field side in his mind. You could see he was just struggling as to how far can I go with this ball. The thing is, this ball is pretty close to dropping fair down the line. One of the reasons why I feel being a corner outfielder is so tough, where you're dealing with those walls. You bet. Now he backs up a couple of steps after Nieves unloaded that one to the opposite field.
And off the plate. Wow. One and one. A couple of close ones for Brad. He shakes his head a little bit right there. I think he feels he's being squeezed a bit. Does that slider up at the front of the, the plate catch a little white? And I think you could argue that there's a pretty good chance it did. Nine double play ground outs and 86 chances. It's about major league average roughly. That's a good looking pitch near the knees one and two both these starting catchers Carlos Corporan for the Astros and Will Nieves for the Phillies getting the call tonight after their teammates caught the 15 innings in the game last night both managers did not want to bring those guys back out again after the five hour and five minute game. This one gets by Corporan and here comes big Ryan Howard and he will score. And it's three to one now. Howard coming home bird moving to third size more going to second. This will no doubt go as a wild pitch but this was not Carlos Corporan's best effort. Generally he is really good at this but on the slider all he does is slide to his right and try to backhand it and pick it out of the dirt. That's not the one you want to see. Not even with a man at first base let alone with the bases juiced. Now runners at second and third and one out. Three runners home. It's a 2 2 count to Nieves. Infield now moves in halfway up the middle. In the air, and Chris Carter comes over toward the line and left. Here's the tag at third base and the throw to the plate. Marlon Bird will score as the ball's not caught cleanly, and now it's a four run first inning on a Nieves sack fly, his fifth run batted in. Four to one Phillies and Ashley will be the eighth man to bat. Not sure if Brad Peacock had any nightmares last night but this four run first inning uh, would have qualified as one for him I'm sure. Not a great throw from Chris but at least cuttable and that keeps the only runner that remains on the bases at second base. Intentional walk to the number eight hitter Ashley will get the pitcher Buchanan to the plate. This will be the third walk of the inning for Peacock his 51st walk of the season in 88 innings. That's a high walk rate. And Buchanan will bat with runners at first and second. Boy, this is a tough scenario with Paul Clemens gone now no real long man that you can uh, Point your finger to in the bullpen and Brad Peacock struggling in the first. Uh, probably the first pitcher who would come to mind is that one, Mike Fultonevich. Yep, a guy that's a possible long man. Guy that has done some starting at the minor league level this year. Uh, you have to guess he'd be the guy. Guys down in the bullpen are already saying, Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> I think it's you. Buchanan bats now. And looks at strike one. 0 for 17. There's a shot into right center field. First major league hit for Buchanan. We'll get a run home. Here's the throw in toward third. And the throw back to second. And they get him there. Umpire fell down and got up and called him out. Jeff Nelson, the crew chief. But the run scored before the tag play at second base. That makes it a five run first for the Phillies. And they get four hits in the inning and they move to walk Ashy intentionally. Backfires when Buchanan gets his first major league hit and drives in a run. Five to one, Phillies. Ryan Sandberg out there and we're yet to see a challenge on the play but Rhino no doubt awaiting that word was there possibly a, a missed call at second base. That's a really delayed reach with that tag and you make so many mistakes in doing that glove needs to go straight down. You can see when the ball does get to second base that there's plenty of time to make the tag. This not the ideal throw from the outfield certainly not a good 
cutoff scenario in the infield that enables the pitcher to try to move into second base and now there is a challenge. 954 play with Grossman throwing it in toward third Dominguez coming off the base and then getting that throw back should be 956 rather as Petit took the throw and we'll see if that holds up or not after the umpires talk to the folks in New York who will make a decision. Yeah, I think here at the ballpark the fans feel that Buchanan got in safely. When the ball gets there, there's plenty of time to snap the glove down and get the out. But I think as it plays out, they're going to wind up with the Phillies winning this review. That is a simple reach by an infielder as opposed to the snap down. Well, Jeff Nelson took a little spill there as he was making that call at second base. His head was moving a bit. That might have made it a little bit more difficult for him to see that tag. See where the glove should have gone in front of the bag. Instead, he just reaches to the back knee. And in my opinion, this is an easy, safe call. Not sure why it's being delayed to this point. It down, don't reach out there. You see Nelson. Pretty difficult for him to be able to maintain vision of that play when he was taking a tumble. Well, we've seen the, the reviews back in New York having been tidied up considerably here in the last couple of months, but I'm not sure what they're needing to see on this one. Wonder if that front foot may have come off the base as the back knee was being tagged, perhaps. I guess that's a possibility. I I was also wondering if the umpires are asking themselves, did the glove possibly touch the lead leg coming in almost inadvertently? But when you review that play, and, and the Astros have made a number of mistakes with this this year, right at, at that instant when the ball is caught. Just snap the glove down in front of the bag that that reach will cost you every time. Now, did that glove possibly touch the lead leg. I don't know. Couldn't tell. There are different angles of course. And the crew in New York will be examining those. They usually have about a dozen angles we have read. Out is the call. And that will end the first inning with the Phillies batting around and scoring five runs on four hits, leaving a man on base. They have a huge first with the five run frame, and they will take a five to one lead to the second. Astros and Phillies in this three game set here at Citizens Bank Park and Fanatic 
You look really busy over there. What are you doing? Let me see. Oh, you're looking up stats? Okay, well, I've got a better idea for you. In order to get enhanced Bloomberg stats, you have to check out Astros in game live. It's, this is what you do. You go to CSNHouston.com. There you go. Check it out. Also vote for player of the game. I bet I'm not here voting for. And we will reveal the winners at Astros post game live. Nice work. Nice work. Fanatics got it. Guys, back up to you. One of the absolute best mascots. Philly Fanatic. Thanks, Julia. Five to one. The Astros trail as they come up in the second inning with Carlos Corporan to lead it off. Carlos at 252 has five homers. He's driven in 18 runs. So he sat out all 15 innings last night. Jason Castro behind the dish. There is strike one. There were 467 pitches thrown by both teams total in the game last night. Corp went one for three Friday against Toronto in his last start. He's hit safely in eight of his last nine games. And this one goes to center field. Rivera with a catch, one out. So Buchanan, who had to run the bases a bit, comes out with a four run lead after the Phillies batted around in the first inning, gets an easy out, and moves along to face Jake Marisnik. You know, there are, there are times uh, when you're going to get beat by the opposition, pitching may not go the way. You hope or or the hitters on the other side get hot but on the fundamental side you should not get beat the way the Astros did in that inning and and when you're seeing throws from the outfield miss cut off men cut off men not be in the right spot and, and tags being uh, inappropriately put down those are the kind of fundamentals that are going to beat you in ball games. Marisnik was hitless last night 0 for 6. Petit is on deck. Marisnik is called for a swing, and it was a very tentative swing. That puts him behind. 0 and 2 in the count. So Buchanan now probably feeling that he should be aggressive, attack the zone with this early lead. The way his club is swinging the bats. But it's in the dirt. Marisnik was the third round pick of Toronto. He's 23 years old. From Tampa, Florida, went to high school in California, Riverside. Had some big league time last year with Miami, 109 at bats. That one moves inside. It's two balls, two strikes. Manning center field right now. George Springer has been working his way back, playing for a Class A farm club of the Astros, Quad Cities. And he could be back as early as tomorrow night. Three and two. He's playing tonight, and the plan is to play him, I believe, seven innings in this game tonight. He's played five innings in the first two minor league rehab games. One is a DH, the other one in right field. So the Astros are still undecided yet, depending on the way things go tonight, whether to bring George to Philadelphia and activate him tomorrow night or give him a day off and have him rejoin the club on the 25 man roster Friday night against the Texas Rangers in Houston. That one goes foul and still a full count to Marisnik. And Dexter Fowler is moving his way back. He could have hit on the field tonight but there was not batting practice on the field. There was a charity softball game. So that took place in the indoor batting cages. So Dexter is showing some progress as well. That's a liner out into left center field. Marisnik reached out and put a good swing on that one. So on the 3 2 count, he's aboard with a one out single. This guy could go a long way to solving uh, part of an outfield situation for the Astros if he can get that bat in play. Takes a very tough pitch getting this hit. Hit number three for the Astros. Marisnik is a good base dealer, but the Astros trail by four. The batter is Petit. Gregorio, 29 years old, hit his first major league homer a few days ago in Houston, and it was a big one, breaking a 1 1 tie in the late innings. That's ball one. Petit has had 18 Houston at bats with a 278 average, one homer, two runs batted in. And like the situation at catcher with Jason Castro working through an arduous evening with 
15 innings and five hours plus of baseball. Marwin Gonzalez did that same thing. He gets the night off. Bouncer and that's by the third baseman Ashy on through into left field. Petit hit it in a good spot for hit number four for the Astros tonight. It's a hitting kind of night, eh? Hit and shoes are on. And that pitch down around the knees. A ground ball that could have resulted in a double play if not put right in that 6 5 hole. Brad Peacock comes up. Two men on, one out. Corner infielders move in looking for a Peacock bunt attempt. Ryan Howard's moving in from first. Peacock showing butt early, and there's strike one. You guys see these American League clubs with the pitchers who don't swing the bat much over the course of the year. And they have a tough time laying down the bunts. That's a curveball in for a strike, and it's 0 2 quickly to Peacock. Is a curve easier to bunt? I think most people through the years have said yes, and I would agree with that. It's breaking downward, therefore, your bat should logically be able to stay above the ball and just kind of work downward. Not that one. And he struck out. That kind of looked like a guy who had never seen the breaking ball. First strikeout, just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. It's brought to you by Miller Light. What a gorgeous night in Philadelphia, PA. Kind of falls in that category of fundamentals once again. Fundamentals are lacking here early for Houston. Jose Altuve. Hit the ball squarely. A line drive single to left field and scored for the 61st time. Getting this game started. He also stole a base. Altuve takes and it's ball one. Jose is seventh in on base average in the American League at 374. 376 now after he reached the first time. He's discerning in taking that one and he creates a two ball no strike count. Buchanan with 17 walks in 61 innings. Has struck out 40. Phillies have had struggles in interleague play and National League play for that matter. Starting from 2012 on up to tonight. They've won 14 and lost 31 in interleague action. Rolled out to second. Oddly, we'll get it on to first and just get it there in time to get out to them. With no runs, two hits. The Astros leave two. It's five to one, Phillies.
bottom of the second. And time for you to tweet us your photos using hashtag CSNH fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast that is brought to you by AT&T. Ronnie. Thanks, Julia. Look forward to that. A little photo action right there. Phillies fans have a lot of smiling to do after their club put together a five run first inning on four hits. There were three walks in the frame. All kinds of traffic around Brad Peacock. Here's Revere taking and a curveball works for strike one. Revere opened the Phillies first with a single to left field and came around to score. So you go into that first inning. It's all about uh, establishing the fastball. Another callable pitch right there for Brad Peacock that doesn't go his way. And now you get into the second inning. You've given up five runs and the first two pitches are breaking balls. And as I say at some point you realize you've got to start pitching again. And that's why uh, it can be dangerous when all you start a ball game with is the notion that it's going to be fastballs. Last win for Brad Peacock was at Texas July 8th. High chop that'll hang and Peacock will not have a chance to get him. He gave it his best effort but with Revere's speed and the way that ball was in the air so long. That was a given that he had his second single of the night. Well if there's to be any shot on this play you better plant that right foot immediately if you're Brad Peacock and see if you can put something on a throw. Right here can you plant the foot and very tough play and I don't. I don't think under any circumstance they're going to get Revere. Speedy leadoff man is two for two. Bouncing it right off home plate. Jimmy Rollins doubled on the right field line. This one's in the air and Matt Dominguez wants it. One down with Udley coming up. The Padres hired A.J. Preller to be their next general manager. He had been an assistant general manager for the Texas Rangers. Oddly hit a fly ball to left in the first inning. The Rangers will be in Houston over the weekend and then next week the Minnesota Twins come in. Friday night it's Brett Oberholzer and Miles Michaelis. At 7:10, as the Astros and Rangers do battle, it's a shot to center field. Marisnik, uh, he just has not made a mistake in terms of turning his shoulders the right way and moving quickly. He's got great feet out there in center field, no doubt. Fans follow every Astros game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv, game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Astros.com today. Ryan Howard bashed a two run double in the first inning to left center field. He's done damage against the Astros down through the seasons. Runner going. Here's a throw from Corcoran bouncing and. A stolen base for Revere is 31st. But a base runner, I don't care how fast, and Ben Revere's fast, steals a bag this easily. Pitcher's got to rethink things. That's just far too easy for anybody. Carlos Corporan has a nice quick release, but he's got no shot whatsoever. 31st steal, he is third in the National League. The pitch was a strike to Howard. And it's one and one to Ryan. Howard now has played 52 games, including this one. Only one inning so far of this one against the Astros in his career and driven in 45 runs. It's pretty close to an RBI a game. While hitting 285 against Houston pitching. And for a strike, and it's one and two. These Phillies lineups, of course, with the left handed hitters Revere, switch hitter Rollins, Utley, Howard, Sizemore, Ashy, all batting left, presenting quite a challenge for a right handed pitcher.
Curveball and Howard is down on strikes. That's number one for Peacock. No runs a hit and the man stranded. It's five to one Phillies after two. Astros, Rockets, Dynamo, and more. We've got all your Houston sports news covered. Check out Sportsnet Central 610 and midnight only on Comcast Sportsnet. We welcome you back out to the Phillies ballpark, Citizens Bank Park, where you can check out Bulls Barbecue, one of the great eats here at the ballpark. And guess what? I found the Bull. Greg Luzinski, the 1980 World Series champ, is with me. This is your place. I know you spend a lot of time out here signing autographs. But if someone's ever been here, what should they order here at Bulls Barbecue? Well, obviously, we cook uh, the ribs on the grill, out, uh, and we have a bulldog out there that we It's a big piece of kibasa, uh, you know, full length, and uh, people very enjoy that. But probably our specialty is the pork, uh, our pulled pork, and uh, obviously used with Bulls Barbecue sauce here. And uh, a sample of the ribs right in front of us. But, uh, you know, the last time I was in Houston, I hate to say this, but it was uh, 1980. I knew you were going there. Don't say that. We're going to send it back up to you guys in the booth. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Well, we remember what happened then, and he has not been invited to return. Two and one. And that's a strike to uh, Robbie Grossman on the one two pitch. He's caught looking for the second strikeout by Buchanan. We'll have more with Julia and Greg Luzinski on that 1980 NLCS. A little bit later, we're going to delve into that. Uh, one of the great playoff series of all time. Involving Ash and the Bull and Larry Boa. So we have some of the principals right here in this ballpark. Larry Boa, the bench coach. Chris Carter, first pitch breaking ball, looks at ball one. He singled to left field in the first inning. For four of those five games in that Astros Phillies series in 1981, extra innings. One and one, and Boa. Of course, was the shortstop for the Phillies at that time. Any trio at second base. Mike Schmidt, just many, many outstanding players taking part in one of the best played postseason series. A lot of folks can remember down through the years. In the air foul, Cody Ashey. Two down for Buchanan. It's hard for me to imagine that in 1980 Major League Baseball was using a best of five scenario as the only postseason format to lead to the World <laughs> Series. True. And the Astros True. had a two games to one edge. They were back into the Astrodome. Leads late in each one of those games. I believe eighth and ninth innings in those last couple of games. And the Phillies won the games. I, they were a terrific ball club. But. Uh, as a member of the Astros, we felt like games got away. And then the Phillies went on to beat Kansas City and win the World Series, their first since, I believe, 1950. John Singleton is ball one. 
1950 Phillies team was dubbed the Whiz Kids. Singleton picked up the RBI bouncing into a force play in the first. What do you think this team would be dubbed? Not kids. This version of the Phillies. Yeah. Oh gosh, I'll bet you they've got. Plenty of versions of names around town. Um, None of them complimentary. No I don't imagine they're an older bunch that. Has underperformed their contracts. Howard. Tosses to Buchanan. That's a quick third inning for the kid David Buchanan. Five to one Phillies. By MD Anderson making cancer history October 10th 1980 Denny Walling it's a sacrifice fly to score Rafael Landestoy in the 11th and give the Astros a one to nothing win over the Phillies with Greg Luzinski making that catch that's game three of the NLCS and it was the second of what would be four extra inning games in the five game series. It looked like a rather fired up bunch. And the crowd was absolutely phenomenal in those days. Houston was on fire for baseball in 1980. And was Philadelphia. Marlon Bird swings at that one, and he was really fooled on the curveball from Peacock. He drew a walk and scored a run in the five run first inning. That was sensational baseball. Boy, the pitching was dynamic. It was really hard to score. A lot of terrific defensive work. Peacock came in with the fastball and got a good result. A lame ground ball. It's 0 and 2. That says happiness. Yes, it does. She wanted to see what it would feel like getting hit in the nose with that thing. <laughs> Bird's not biting on that one. It's a one ball two strike count. Peacock trying to regroup after giving up five in the first inning tonight. Dallas Keuchel very fine last night. Seven innings five hits one run. That's a liner caught. Altuve. Down on a knee to snag it. We go to Julius C. Morales. Thanks with Greg Luzinski. The bull out here at a bulls barbecue and. We've been talking about the 1980 series between the Astros and the Phillies. What do you remember most about that series? Well, it was probably one of the greatest series, uh, playoff series in the history of baseball. I mean, uh, that was a time where uh, you had to win three out of five, uh, you know, to, to go to the World Series. And, uh, you know, it was pretty tough. Uh, you know, we had experienced some losses in playoffs before that. And Houston was ahead of us in the series going to Houston, which uh, 
uh, was tough for us to play. We always had good pitch games in Houston, but couldn't score many runs. And uh, when Nolan Ryan had us down, what he did, and to come back against him, uh, you know, there was, you know, the bunt, the, the ball up the middle that could have maybe been a double play ball if he, if Nolan would have uh, fielded it, uh, could have changed the outcome of that game. But uh, like I said, uh, it was a great, uh, a great series. Pete Rose running over the catcher, you know. And uh, I had two game winning hits, so I'm really happy. Well, just the competition between the Phillies and the Astros in those years, and looking back on the Astros back in those days, what do you remember about competing against Houston? Well, they had a great team. You know, uh, I always thought their pitching staff was really, really super. I know uh, I faced uh, Wilson there, I faced Dirk, Larry Durker there, uh, J.R. Richards, uh, quite a few good pit pitchers, and uh, obviously it was a big series. Uh, a very competitive series, and uh, now that you look kind of back at the history, you know, history. It was our first World Series that we won, uh, you know, here at, here in Philadelphia. And I know you know, Houston still uh, pl try, pl plodding along, trying to pick pick up a World Series. But uh, I think uh, they're in the right direction with a lot of great young ball players came up, coming up through their system and uh, through trade. So uh, hopefully that we get very competitive here in the American League. It's good to see you, Greg. Wish you the best of luck. Thanks for the time. Hey, you got to try some of this I'm, now. I'm you know, Houston, the, Houston, Texas is, you know, barbecue heaven. So uh, you see how we compare. All right. I'll check it out. Thanks again. All right. Tough assignment, Julia, but that was interesting to hear the thoughts of the bull. No balls, two strikes to Nieves after Sizemore grounded out. And he fouls it back. See what else happened in 1980 in that series, Ash, which you remember so well, even though you were getting shot up to play the games you started. Phillies won it three to two for the five extra innings. The composite score within one run. And the Astros arrived uh, very close to game one start because of that extra playoff game in Los Angeles. So it was a tired Houston team. There's the strikeout. That ends the third inning, and it's five to one Phillies after three. Philadelphia. Come out to Minute Maid Park this Saturday, August 9th, when the Astros face off against the Texas Rangers at 6.10 p.m. Be sure to arrive early as 10,000 fans will receive an Astros cowboy hat presented by Xfinity. For tickets, call 1-877-9-ASTROS or visit astros.com. Guys, we heard from Luzinski on that series, but there's a guy in the booth I want to hear a little bit more from. Ash, your thoughts? Yeah, Julia, it's, uh, it's intriguing uh, hearing from the Bull, a guy that was uh, a big-time hitter for the Phillies. You'd see him out in left field all the time. Uh, and again, you know, he, he talks about the fact that it was a best of five series. Very different in those days. And that was all there was. There was nothing leading up to that or that leading to something other than the World Series. Uh, the Phillies were one of three clubs in the 80s that beat the Astros on the way to the World Series and won the World Series. 
Matt Dominguez smacks one into the gap in left center field. There's a good start for the Astros here in the fourth inning. Dominguez starts it with a double. That's his 17th. Second ball that Matt has stung this evening. And he just takes a fastball right through the gut and does what you're supposed to do with it. But going back to that 1980 series, uh, it, it was terrific talented ball club for the Phillies and I, I as Greg Luzinski was mentioning the, the crash of Pete Rose at the plate that was Bruce Bochy who has gone on to be one of the game's great managers I was ailing with the broken ribs at the time and played as much as I could Corporan grounds and there's the throw Probably to Howard out number one Dominguez to third yeah how many games did you start a couple of honestly I, I at this point I would say two maybe three but uh, it was it was tough sledding in that series for me. They had the great Steve Carlton and uh, I, I had my struggles as a right hand hitter and Carlton was a, a key factor in the series for the Phils. Um, yeah but it was it was devastating when we eventually lost Nolan Ryan had the mound. We had the lead late in the ball game and it got away and I remember Bob Boone coming up with a key hit that uh, left questions about Bill Verdon's decision at the time and that was very unfortunate. Bill was a terrific manager. Marisnik fouls it. There's strike one. Jake worked the count to three two and he singled to left center his first time up. Well let's look at the box score and see. Louis Pujols started game one at catcher for the Astros. Alan Ashby started game two. That's out to left center field. Revere going for it. And on the run. He snags it. That ball had great carry to it. It's a sack fly, and it's five to two. Marisnik gets his first RBI, second RBI as an Astro. So we mentioned that Matt Dominguez, one for two, has hit a couple of balls well. And Jake Marisnik in a bid for a second hit, at least comes up with a sack fly, driving in a run. He's had good at bats. So a promising night offensively for this guy. Now a three run lead. And Gregorio Petit bats. He's single to left in the second. Louis Pujol started game three and game four. And game five. Hmm. So only one start in that series for me. That's uh I my heart was in it so much that it's kind of hard to remember it that way. Well, you came in, uh, you got three at bats. Pinch hitting in game five and staying in to catch. That one's rip foul. One and two. One of the big plays I remember, and I think it was game four, there was uh, the Phillies had a couple of guys on base, and there was a little bunt or a, a looper at the mound that Vern Rule either caught or trapped. And it had to wind up with the umpires calling it either one out or a triple play. Instead, it was a double play and uh, just that one call that couldn't be made. Strange. Five to two Phillies in the fourth.
Mets lead it over the Astros. Time now to take a look at the Astros' upcoming schedule, presented by Progressive. One more with the Phillies. That's tomorrow night, a night game that's going to make a long night of travel for the ball club back to Houston. The Texas Rangers invade for three, followed by the Twins and the Boston Red Sox. That Boston Red Sox series is the Astros back out on the road, part of a 10 gamer that will start in Boston, move on to New York, and then on to Cleveland. So you've got the Texas Rangers and the Twins coming to town. Make your plans to join us. Five to two, the Phillies lead it. Cody Ashey's the batter. He gets a curveball from Brad Peacock, and it's strike one to Ashey, who was walked intentionally. One other note on that 1980 National League Championship Series Cesar Cedeno was injured in game one mm. and did not play against serious ankle injury. Horrific at first base. Hit the bag wrong, compound fracture, and uh, yeah, the bone actually popped out of the skin. It was just really devastating. Two balls and a strike. And let's add another note. Because of the extra game to decide uh, who won the NL West, the Astros beating the Dodgers. Joe Necro could not start game one because he was used in that one game playoff and uh, went the distance and beat the Dodgers. But that meant that he was not available to pitch more than one game in the five game series against the Phillies. Fly ball deep right field that's headed for trouble if it stays fair and that is a foul ball. Oh, it looked like it might stay fair. As she comes back with a 2 2 count. Close. That's begging time when you're going down the line. It's right in front of you. But you also know it's right in front of that first base umpire that curveball from Brad Peacock. Gets yanked and. Fortunate for Brad, it's yanked just a little early. Well, you can see from that line, not nearly as close as it looked from our seat. Well, that's true. It didn't look close at all on that replay. I could have made that call down there. Never mind. <laughs> Three and two now to Ashy. You're not good with that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he struck him out. That's number three for Peacock. That's starting to come together for Brad. He's using all the pitches now. He's pitching, and he's been up to 94 with the fastball. So the stuff is pretty good here. What do you think has happened? That's well, the first time. you know, I, the first inning, um, he had some walks. He had a couple, actually three in the inning, uh, two without the intentional. But I felt like the intention to go out there and establish the fastball left. The Phillies with only one thing to look for, and they hit it sharply. Ball one of Buchanan. He had an RBI single as they scored five in the first. It's two and oh. In the American League, starting pitchers who get knocked around in the first are used to staying in. And so this is more of an American League ballpark type of approach, if you will, without a long man available. Although Mike Fultonevich probably would fit into that category for tonight. Three balls, one strike. Different style of managing, though, in the NL parks. That's a one out walk to Buchanan. The fourth walk for Peacock. No way he can be happy with that outcome. Things are not going right when you're walking the opposing pitcher. A guy who has one major league hit and it came against you in the previous time the two faced each other. Buchanan is on talking with Singleton as Revere moves into the box. Revere is two for two. Red Sox and Cardinals are in a delay in St. Louis. They have not been able to get started. In for strike one. Those two teams hooked up on the big trade with John Lackey going to St. Louis. Alan Craig went to Boston, but he's already on the disabled list. And Joe Kelly, I believe, is supposed to pitch tonight against the Cardinals in St. Louis. That's grounded foul. 0 and 2. As Kelly is down to pitch for Boston against Shelby Miller.
Going to get your opinion about the NL Central in a minute. Milwaukee has a one game lead over St. Louis. Two and a half over Pittsburgh. Five on Cincinnati. Marisnik out in left center field. Two outs. Who's going to win the NL Central? Brewers and Pirates are kind of uh, nice storied teams. The Pirates, that'd be fun to see them win a second straight year in that division. But the Cardinals lurking in there, they're just, they're legendary. They, they feel like the team that you always have to be peeking at. And they're just a game back. I'd be concerned about the Cardinals. And Matt Garza just went on the DL for Milwaukee. Andrew McCutcheon is hurt for Pittsburgh. Jimmy Rollins is one for two. Strike one. McCutcheon got drilled in the back by a pitch at Arizona. And apparently he has a fractured rib, but they're not placing him on the DL. I don't think they feel like they can afford to go 15 games without him. Boy. That was an unusual target that Corcoran set up that time. The way he placed his mitt. Well, maybe not so much. On occasions, he he, he does tend to do that uh, kind of el left elbow yeah. straight out kind of a, an approach. Yeah. I've had many a catching coach through the years say that elbow should be down in between the knee, which I completely disagree with. Line past Altuve into right field. Rollins is two for three in this game. Both times he's had hits, it's been on 0-2 pitches. Back in the first inning, it was Rollins hitting that slider down and in and drilling it just inside the line. Yeah, if you get as a catcher, you get that left elbow pinned inside of the left knee, and then you get the pitch to your left side, you can get just completely stuck. So you always want to keep that elbow above or outside of the knee. Two on and two out. Utley is flied to left and he's flied to center. Tigers one, Yankees nothing. Bottom of the fourth at Yankee Stadium with Justin Verlander on the mound for Detroit. It's a big start for him. He was good last time out, and that's really been about it on the positive side. Strike to Utley. Yeah, before that, he had not been putting up good numbers. He is matched tonight with Chris Capuano for the Yanks. J.D. Martinez now is being counted upon as an everyday player for Detroit. He's batting fifth in the lineup. 0 for 2 tonight, hitting 309. Yeah, he has been it's been a big force. After the trade of Austin Jackson. Udley hits one high to right field and he has some depth on it. Chase Udley three run homer. Number 10 eight to two Phillies. I think I could safely say the shortest home run swing in the game is possessed by Chase Utley. He just has that front elbow bend in tucked to the body and it shortens the swing at all times. But it enables him in the process to get that barrel through so quickly. Ten homers 59 runs batted in for Utley and an eight to two lead for the Phillies. That's a big swing after the Astros had scored in the top of the inning. Strike to Howard Ryan Howard with a two run double to left center in the first is one for two could be viewed as the put away swing tonight. At least hit well over 200 homers in his career. One ball one strike. More than 800 runs batted in now Mike Fulton has gotten up in the Astros bullpen area. Not throwing yet. 
in tight for a ball that makes it two and one the pitcher spot is due up first for Houston in the fifth. Fulton Evich has plenty of time to get loose. Bo Porter maybe pinch hitting. It's 3 1. Fulton Evich has been starting at Triple A Oklahoma City. So he could stay in and pitch a few innings and preserve some of the other relievers for tomorrow night. That's grounded foul by Howard. 3 and 2. Well, Brownie, tonight's game for Brad Peacock now makes it three consecutive very poor starts for Brad. And the numbers are, are starting to reflect that. And you wonder, might Mike Fulton Evich be a guy who would be considered for the starting rotation coming up soon? Howard strikes out. The Phillies get the three run bomb from Utley. And their lead now is six. Eight to two, Philadelphia after four. Houston Astros face off against their interstate rivals, the Texas Rangers, in a three game series this weekend at Minute Maid Park. Each game, one lucky fan will win $5,000 from Slotomania. 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 For tickets, call 1 877 9 Astros or visit Astros.com. Slotomania. What exactly is that, Ash? I have no idea. Well, Brad Peacock is staying into bat. And taking strike one. Peacock struck out in the second inning. So obviously, Paul Porter wants to get more from Brad in this 8 to 2 game than the four innings. No balls, two strikes. Now trailing 8 to 2. We'll check the pitch count on Brad, see where he is at this point of the game. But well, maybe at this point, he's determined that he and Mike Fultonevich should share the innings tonight or something along those lines. Peacock strikes out. That's well, number four. I don't know at this stage, and I just got done saying this is three consecutive rough ones for Brad Peacock. I'm not sure that he can salvage this night at this point. If he can go out and provide two or three more innings, shut out baseball, maybe so. What about the concept that if he pitches a couple of scoreless innings? He would have derived something positive from this evening. Yeah, that's why. Uh, I say I'm not sure this is salvageable. I, I'm not sure that you can throw that spin and have it mean much at this stage of things. I think it's going to take more than that for Brad. He's at 79 pitches for the night with those numbers. Altuve one for two. Grounds one and Rollins lays out for it. Can't make the play. Altuve gets his second knock. His 48th two hit game to lead the American League. I don't know if Jimmy Rollins comes up with this cleanly and bounces to his feet if he can get Altuve going down the line. But you wouldn't want to take that shot. This guy's been a great shortstop for a long, long time.
40. The eighth multi hit game, the major league leader. Now Robbie Grossman 0 for 2. Looks at ball one. It's 2 and 0, oh, and David Buchanan is shooting for win number six. That's a major leaguer. Phillies really got. And Arsenal have worked from their bullpen last night. It was Giles, Papelbon, Diekman, Bestardo, DeFreitas, Hollins. And then the winning pitcher in relief was sent out today. Roll foul, first base side. They had to make room for the starter, Buchanan. So Neris, who got the win. Is no longer on Ryan Sandberg's ball club tonight. Apparently, Buchanan's keeping the guys comfy in the bullpen. He knows he's got the night off. Strike call, and it's two and two. Chad Qualls didn't pitch last night. Grounded foul, and Robbie keeps the count at two balls, two strikes. Washington leads the Mets three to nothing. That Nationals club bears watching right now, trying to pull away from the Atlanta Braves in the NL East, leading currently by three games. But Atlanta lost tonight, so it could go up to four. Nationals three, Mets nothing. Top of the sixth in Washington. Doug Fister on the mound. Close one. Robbie takes it. And he's worked the count full with one down. Jonathan Nice started for New York. Adam LaRoche hit his 14th homer off Nice. Bryce Harper sitting 251 for Washington this year. With next to no power. Yeah. Bouncer Howard will now the runner stopped Altuve. He's going to be in a run. <laughs> that was fun. Howard uh, noticed something wasn't happening. Altuve wasn't passing him on the way to second base, and that distracted him, and it meant no double play. That's pretty coy on the part of Altuve. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, where this play was going to go. I mean, <laughs> if if Howard had somehow applied a tag, he still had no play back to first base. Uh, I'm not sure there was going to be any shot for a double play, although. It would have taken an immediate release towards second to start one. Right. So uh, once that broke down, man, maybe that was wise on Altuve's part. <laughs> we'll have to ask him. Chris Carter, the batter, he's one for two. That's ball one. Well, Altuve had to assume he was going to be out. If Ryan Howard had thrown that ball directly to second. But uh, yeah, the thing is, I wonder if Jose momentarily thought, well, maybe I can dash back to first, but that's not going to be allowed. Sharp base hit to right center field. Backhanded by Bird. He gets it back in towards second with a good play. And Carter really stung that one. Chris, two for three tonight. Grossman goes first to third. Chris Carter looks like the real deal for the moment. Can he maintain this stroke? And I think only time's going to tell, but what an improved version of Chris Carter this is we're looking at. That is nice. That's the way the big boys do it. It's been a dramatic change. Since July, Chris Carter has been meeting the ball squarely. He's been avoiding striking out. He's been selecting better pitches. That wasn't the best slider. It was hung up over the plate, but. Good hitters handle that that pitch that's uh, not ideally thrown by the pitcher and Chris Carter did that on that pitch. Ball one to John Singleton who is over two tonight if he rockets one out of here it's going to get fairly interesting at eight to five. Chase Udley's on the right field grass. Two balls no strikes there's the way the Phillies have lined up. He hits one between the third baseman Ashy and the base. He can run for a while. He 
He doesn't. He pulls it past T. Brock. Two balls, one strike. It's been a much improved version of John Singleton with the bat in recent games. So you've got Carter and Singleton swinging it well. Where is George Springer? And can he come back in and be an impactful offensive player right away? Singleton takes ball three, and it's three balls, no strikes. Quad Cities won four to nothing last night. George Springer uh, playing in that game. He grounded out twice and caught a fly ball in his five innings. That's his second rehab game with Quad Cities. In for a strike, and now it's three and two. Three one changeup. That's a respect pitch. It sure is. Now Howard is playing behind Carter. Carter will take off on the pitch. There's a shot. Rollins to his right. Over to Howard. No runs, two hits, two man left, middle of the fifth inning, eight to two Phillies. Houston Astros baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. And by Five Hour Energy. Five Hour Energy helps recognize those who, despite their own needs, put others first. 8 to 2, the Phillies lead it. Brad Peacock working the home fifth. Marlon Bird taking, and it's strike one to Bird. Bird has walked and scored in the first line to second in the third inning. Bird was among those who was his name was bandied about in uh, trade rumors prior to the deadline. Now we're past the non waiver trade deadline and deals could still be made and there are rumors that uh, the Phillies have placed their prominent players in this first wave of waivers so. If they're claimed, then things could be worked out to make a deal with the claiming club, or if not, maybe he stays with Philly, or maybe he goes on a waiver deal. Two balls, two strikes, and uh, so things could be coming to a head, according to reports, pretty soon here in Philadelphia with some of these big name veteran Phillies players. I would say the biggest danger in, in considering claiming. A waived player off of the Phillies roster is the is the salary. Yeah. If you claim that player, you're subject to that salary. If you, if the Phillies were to reclaim the player and then try to work out a deal, well, that's that's a different story. But 
Uh, if they want to just let the player go. You just pay up. Backhanded Petit throwing from the outfield grass. Fine play. One out. Good footwork. He put himself into a nice throwing position, and that was a long throw. He didn't try to make the play tougher than it really was. On the one hop, hit by Marlon Bird. You should be able to plant and make an effective throw. And he does, and that, that's simply the way he makes the play. Didn't try to keep running toward the left field line and make a circus play, just plants that foot and makes a good one. Strike one to Grady Sizemore. T playing shortstop tonight. Marwin Gonzalez had missed several games with a hamstring strain, then had played the long game last night, and Bo Porter did not want to press his luck with Marwin playing again tonight. In for a strike for Peacock. It's 0-2. Pirates four, Marlins three. They have played five in Pittsburgh. Jeff Locke started for the Buckos against Tom Kohler. Christian Yelich hit his ninth homer. And tight, and it's one and two. Riley, back on you were talking about Marlon Burden. He's been a, a very good player for the Phils this year. Could he help a club along the way? I'm sure he could. But if you do claim him, you're subject. To the remainder of the eight million owed this year and another eight next year and then a buyout year in the in the final year of his deal. Right. So a lot of money uh, has to be considered if you do make that claim on a Marlon Burt. It's an excellent point. Teams have to be very careful before they claim players on waivers. There used to be a lot of games played that block players from going to their division rivals in a pennant race. There's lefty Darren Downs warming up for the Astros. But well, once the salaries got as high as they are right now, <laughs> that strategy changed a little bit, especially the year that uh, Randy Myers was exposed to waivers in San Diego. According to reports, just trying to block him from going to, I believe it was the Dodgers at the time. And uh, his original club said, fine, you can have him. And they didn't really want him. <laughs> Backhanded, Dominguez throws. For round number two. Yeah, that was that big ha ha moment. <laughs> yeah. Create memories, have fun, and enjoy a premium experience with an Astros luxury suite at Minute Maid Park. We'll create an experience your group is sure to remember. Call Astros Premium Ticket Line at 1 8779 Astros to reserve your luxury suite today. Back home Friday night for the first of a six game homestand with the Rangers and the Twins. Will Nieves is 0 for 1 with a sack fly in that five run first inning for the Phillies. Petit feels the two bouncer. That's a quick fifth inning for Peacock on three ground ball outs. After five, eight to two, Phillies.
the Phillies over the Astros. Bring the whole family out every Sunday home game at Minute Maid Park this season for Family Sundays presented by Kroger with the Astros. Take advantage of the Kroger family four-pack for only $70 this Sunday when the Astros take on the Rangers. For tickets, call one 877 astros or visit astros.com. And boy, did we get a show. Look at Fanatic go. <laughs> Look at these salsa moves. Oh, it's amazing. Last he has the umpire. Well, a little surprise from him. Keep your eyes on Laz Diaz. <laughs> Acts like he wants nothing to do with it. Arms folded. He's just playing <laughs> coin. Stoic demeanor. We'll get back to it. Matt Dominguez fouls it. There's strike one leading off the sixth inning. Here's the way it wound up. Look at that. Uh-oh. <laughs> Foul back. Oh, that too. Oh, this is great. This is so good. The fanatic can get people to do anything. That is terrific. Good sport, Laz yeah, Diaz. That's, that's very nice from Laz. And I want to say, uh, last night I thought over the 15 innings, he did a great job behind the plate. 467 pitches for Laz Diaz in last night's game. Five hours and five minutes of umpiring home plate. It was a full night's work, and he, he did a fine job. 0 oh 2 for Matty D. He started the fourth inning with a double and came around on a sack fly by Marisnik. Each club with seven hits, no errors. But that's a strikeout for Buchanan. Number five. Well spotted fastball inside edge. Carlos Corcoran is the batter. He's fly to center and grounded out. Blue Jays are playing at home and they lead Baltimore four to one in the top of the sixth inning. Drew Hutchison on the mound against Wei Yin Chen. Chris Davis hit his 19th home run for Baltimore. That's out to right center field. Revere on the run. Revere will make the catch. Two out. I don't know. I'm kind of liking those Baltimore Orioles. The Toronto Blue Jays look like they got exposed. That that roster is a little thin right now. Uh, the Astros exposed them. And I like I like what the Orioles look like for the moment. Jake Marisnik has a single and a sack fly. Currently, Baltimore leads Toronto by five games. Toronto's trying to snap a four-game losing streak tonight. Jose Bautista hit his 22nd. Strike to Marisnik. Toronto, though, is currently holding down one of the two wild card spots in the American League. Oh and two. Well, if they were able to win one in the end, and they got a healthy Encarnacion to go with Bautista, and those guys were hot, and they got Adam Lind and Brett Laurie back, I'd give them a chance. But they're far too short right now. Laurie did come back last night, but now it looked like he had a new injury. He left that game last night. One ball, two strikes for Morisnik. Reds five, Indians nothing. That game is in Cincinnati in the bottom of the sixth inning. Matt Latos, who apparently has the record for eating uh, Philly cheesesteaks in the visiting clubhouse in this ballpark, pitching very well tonight. Six innings, three hits, no runs. I heard Brad Lidge's name surface last night. Well, evidently he was a contender as well. What did we hear the record was? 18? Is that possible? <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think Joey what's his name could do that. No he couldn't do that. Revere back for this fly ball to center field. Joey Chestnut. Yep. One two three sixth inning. <laughs> Fanatic always entertaining. Eight to two plays.
Here's our minor league report brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Last night, Michael Feliz, right-hander, had a very nice one. 14 starts in the year. He's 7 and 4. 382 the ERA and went eight innings with nine strikeouts and a shutout performance last night. Mark Appel also pitched. He's made a couple of starts at Corpus now. Yet to pick up a win or a loss. 386 the ERA last night. Touched up a bit. Four earnings in four and a third innings. So it's been a little good and a little less than good for Mark Appel since going to double A. Now Darren Downs has come out of the bullpen for Houston. He's two and one. His ERA is 4.50. He did pitch in last night's game. He's walked 12 in 28 innings. Done a nice job in, in regards to that batting average against 207 for the lefties. Right-handers have have hit him, but overall just 240. Last night Darren worked an inning out of third, throwing 24 pitches. Cody Ashey takes his first one here and it's ball one. Brad Peacock tonight in five innings allowed seven hits eight earned runs. Walking four, fanning four throwing 92 pitches 58 for strikes. Foul back and it's a one ball one strike count for Darren Downs. One of six Houston pitchers to work last night. He did not give up a hit or a run in last night's game. Hit a batter, Ryan Howard, but then he left the game and Jose Veras got out of trouble. One and two to Ashy. Brad Peacock's ERA now stands at 5.44. Downs bounces that one. Two balls and two strikes the count. Got to know where the Astros turn uh, five days from now when Peacock's turn comes back up in the rotation. But there'll be a challenge to run him back out there again. Downs has not given up a run in any of his last six outings. Paul Porter has watched tonight the Phillies. Score five runs in the first, three more in the fourth. That was on a homer by Utley. Foul away. And when the Astros are doing well, it is strongly correlated to good starting pitching. That's what happened when they turned around that last homestand. They lost three straight to Miami, and then they pitched well in winning two of three from Oakland, continued that in winning three of four from Toronto. Well, that would figure to be the, be the case. They are and have been throughout the year. Among the uh, poorer scoring teams in the league. Ash is down on strikes. Downs opens with the fifth Houston punch out of the night. Nice put away slide piece. David Buchanan draws the applause. Well, in addition to pitching pretty well, he has an RBI single and a walk and a run scored tonight. Perfect night for the pitcher as a hitter. Last night was the Phillies' fifth game lasting 14 innings or more this season. Out to center field, Morisnik. Two outs. He was over in right center to start. He's one of those guys, if you're just kind of glancing around, not looking at the field, and you hear the ball hit and you look up, he's moving. He's already moved quite a bit. Yeah, it looks like he has the instincts to be a, a very good outfielder. That hitting side has been the only short side when he's had a chance in the big leagues. Ben Rivera has a couple of hits tonight. He has stolen a base and scored a run. Giants lead the Brewers three to one in the bottom of the second at Milwaukee. They have Ryan Vogelsong on the mound against Giovanni Gallardo. Carlos Gomez hit his 17th for Milwaukee. And strike one to Rivera. Think the Giants will reach the playoffs this year? Well, they're in a dog battle with the Dodgers, aren't they? And two and a half back at the start of play today. 
one and one. It's that even year for Bruce Bochy and his Giants, and they've been really good in the even years. Zach Grenke really got lit up by the Angels early last night. One and two. See where, see where Clayton Kershaw was just simply unwilling to to nibble on anything the the reporters were throwing him in that one on one matchup against Mike Trout last night. Trout got a couple of hits and Kershaw got him as well and Kershaw wanted to talk about the two ball clubs and everybody wanted to ask about that individual matchup. What's wrong with answering that question. Ground ball in the right center field. A two out single to Revere. Yeah, I, I think what Kershaw felt was that he was willing to talk about Dodgers versus Angels, but let's not make it this one on one grudge match on the field. And I don't know. I he probably could have loosened up a little bit, but he wanted to, to talk about his club. Well, he sets the rules. He's doing the interviews. Jimmy Rollins has two hits and he has scored two runs tonight. Larry Boa, one of the all time Phillies great shortstops. The bench coach, Jimmy Rollins, another one of the all time Phillies great shortstops. Fouls it back, strike one. Well, that covers some years with Boa and Rollins and what they have done in the history of this franchise. You know that Larry Boa was one of the most sure handed, steady, get it done shortstops of all time. And yet I don't know if his his tools would translate into being given a chance in today's game. Uh, guys have to tool out. They have to be really fast. And he was fast. Uh, he didn't have the strong arm. And I think that's one thing that that uh, people look at to say you can or can't play shortstop. Ozzie Smith didn't have a strong throwing arm. Omar Vizquel. But boy you didn't find better shortstops than those guys named. True. One and one. I think those guys given the chance in the minor leagues would probably be declared as second baseman at least to begin with. Yeah. One and two the count. Larry Boa had uh, almost 2200 hits. Dominguez gets a two Altuve for the force play to end the bottom of the sixth inning no runs a hit and a man left eight to two Phillies after six. Top of the seventh. Time for our Geico quote of the day. It comes from George Springer, who's rehabbing at Quad Cities, but said this about the Astros. I think the thing is that the Astros are on the map now. We're playing some good quality baseball, and teams are starting to have some respect. The Astros looking forward to having him back, and Springer continuing that rehab assignment. They're wanting him to play seven innings today. He's one for one with a double and a stolen base. That is very, very good news. Hope to see him soon. 
things like that again. That's right, Julia. Now in this 8 to 2 game, there's a foul ball as Gregorio Petit leads it off in the seventh inning. He is one for two. Hopefully, George will return the next couple of days to the Astros. We want to send our best wishes along to Frankie Hicks, who does uh, engineering for visiting teams radio broadcasts at Minute Maid Park. And we understand Frankie is doing better. That's a floater and it's foul back going to and a question for you from Robin Nash. You started to talk about it but we were rudely interrupted by the third out of the inning. And uh, it was that uh, line drive back to Vern rule during the 1980 league championship series. And uh, the umpires ruled a double play. But the real question was was it a triple play. It seemed to be a compromise call. It was. Time. It, it was the one call that you couldn't say okay here's why we we made this. It didn't fit. You either had to get a triple play which we believed it was the Astros or one out. But double play was not not viable. And we didn't have replays and we didn't have uh, all the kind of stuff that went with it. They decided they'd give a double play and and kind of put it in between for both ball clubs. But I don't even remember what impact it had at this point. There's a hit up the middle for Petit. He is two for three. Got a hanger on an 0-2 count. Gregorio's you, played well. Yeah, he has. He has on both sides of the game. You, you referred to it as a line drive, and I don't remember exactly if it was a bunt. It was a little looper right uh -huh. there at the front of the mound. Yeah. And Vern reached down and did he grab it? Did he? Catch it before it hit the dirt or after that was the big question. Now the pinch hitters Mark Kraus the Astros four for 52 pinch hitting all singles. For an 077 pinch hit average he's batting for Darren Downs. Downs in one inning allowed one hit no runs he had no walks one strikeout. Pitching well for the second straight night in this series. Kraus takes a look at it it's ball one to Mark. And we see Mike Fulton Evich in the bullpen. Kraus pinch hit in last night's game and struck out in the eighth inning against hard throwing Ken Giles. Boy, he was really firing it up there, 99. One ball, one strike. Good looking young reliever for the Phillies. Phillies have some nice arms to go along with him in that bullpen. We saw two guys, righty and the lefty, both getting up in that 99 range. Ken Giles, a guy to watch. Could be a closer. Two balls and one strike. Kraus with a 184 average has had 147 advance for the Astros. Five homers, 18 runs batted in. One for eight pinch hitting. Yeah, and Burn Rule, whether he caught that or trapped that ball, that was the real question. And there was a long conference involving the umpires. And I believe National League President Chubb Feeney was sitting down there by the field and he was involved. Two balls, two strikes. What it felt like when it was all said and done is that, look, we don't know what happened, and I'm not sure anybody in the ballpark really did, whether it was caught or not. Uh, but the fair thing to do, even though it was not the, it wasn't, you couldn't explain it as a double play, but the fair thing. Was to split the difference and call it a double play, and, and that's what they wound up doing. Now, Vern threw the ball to first base, which would have completed a double play had he caught the ball. And then I believe there was one more out that was recorded, but there was confusion on everybody's part. Right. Was it an out at the mound or not? And that's where I think the umpire said, "Hey, let's uh, let's split the difference here." Jake Dickman was the lefty throwing in the bullpen for the Phils. That's ripped into right center field. Kraus with a pinch hit. Petit will go first to third. The ball not fielded by Bird. Bird gets it into second, but not in time. And that's a really good swing from Mark Kraus. Some thunder jumped off his bat. He got the ball past Dudley, and then Bird couldn't pick it up. So it should be a pinch single and then an error on Bird. Yeah, you watch this swing. That's one of Mark Krause's finest. He just aggressively goes after a fastball in a good spot to handle. And Marlon Bird just doesn't come up with it. 
Now with the score eight to two, Ryan Sandberg comes out, or Bob McClure it is, the pitching coach. He's a former lefty reliever. Pitched for Kansas City and other clubs. Though they talk it over here with two men in scoring position and Jose Altuve, the batter, as Diekman and DeFreitas are warming up. I believe it was Art Howe who was playing first in the 1980 League Championship Series game, and Vern ruled through the ball to Art. And he had his foot on the bag. Then I think he ran down to second, but there was so much confusion. And so if the ball had been caught on the fly, it would have been out number one with rule catching and out number two when he threw the first to double off that runner and then Art took care of out number three at second base on what could have been ruled a triple play but was not it was ruled a double play. Very strange. And again if if it was a catch it was a triple play as you say if it wasn't a catch the throw to first base would not have provided an out other than on the hitter himself <laughs> right. <laughs> and and so uh, yeah it just got very muddied at that point very odd 2 and 0 oh. there was a whole lot of confusion reigning supreme that day in the Astrodome Altuve has two hits another one here could make it 8 to 4 Philadelphia It's 3 and 0. Pat Listash, the third base coach, will not take chances with nobody out in the inning, trailing by six. So, as far as scoring Kraus, it would depend on where Altuve's hit went. Jose's driven in 33 runs. Taking all the way, he looks at a strike. Well, I wonder what Jose has in his mind right here. Does he get aggressive on the three one? See if he can drive in a pair and and somewhat get the Astros back in this ball game. Yes. I would like to see him get his hacks. Ground ball and Rollins with the runner coming home throws low out at first. Dug out by Ryan Howard on a very close call by Scott Barry. It's eight to three. With Petit scoring and Altuve getting his 34th run batted in. I think Jose Altuve feels that he beat this play. And he kind of signaled safe himself. Bo Porter is waiting to get word in the dugout as to whether this is worth a challenge. But let's take our peek. Does Altuve get to the bag first? Well, that's close. I don't know that that would be winnable. I believe he's probably out on the play. Close call. There is no challenge, but there's going to be a pitching change for Ryan Sandberg. Sandberg out the mound, taking the ball from David Buchanan. He leaves with the score. Eight to three, Philadelphia. Bullpen coming into play for the Phils. It was outstanding last night. What will it do tonight? We'll find out in just a moment.
seventh here. And uh, during this game, we've had some fun with the Phillies mascot, Philly Fanatic, who is nice enough to join us for some of the segments today. He's in the Mascot Hall of Fame. He's well known. No disrespect to Orbit, who we love very much. But it was good to get a chance to, to mess around with Fanatic, who was a, a lot of fun. And we're going to show you some of the outtakes of some of the things we did earlier today. Brad Peacock on the mound. He's been recalled. He's trying to help the Astros build. <laughs> starts right now <laughs> he's a lot of fun and then earlier in case you missed it came out with this awesome salsa performance and even got their base umpire Las Diaz to join in on all the fun oh there he goes just TV gold right there <laughs> big thanks to Fanatic though he's been fun Lefty Jack Dickman's come out of the bullpen to face Robbie Grossman. Robbie's 0 for 3. And he buries the slider in the dirt. There's Paul Juan. Dickman was among those outstanding Philly relievers who worked in last night's 15 inning game. He worked a scoreless inning. He's 3 and 3 with a 4.32 ERA. Excellent strikeout numbers. 71 punch outs in 50 innings for Dickman. With his stuff, you can understand why the left hand hitters have struggled against him. One and one is Robbie Grossman. Bats with the runner at second and one out. Last year, statistically, Robbie was definitely better as a right hand hitter. That's flipped around this year. That's a strike call, making it one and two to Grossman. Diekman is tied for second in the National League in strikeouts by a reliever. And he's averaging 12.78 punch outs per nine innings. That's fourth in the NL. Way up and watch out. How about that for a wild pitch. Krause has pitched a <laughs> wild pitch to third, and it's a two ball, two strike count. Let's see if they rule this a wild pitch or a pass ball. <laughs> it's a tough call. <laughs> okay, change it to pass ball. <laughs> he definitely should have knocked that down. Dear me. Now, runner at third and one out with Grossman looking for the RBI, trailing by five. Well, there was a strange play last night in that uh, Cleveland Arizona game. David Murphy of Cleveland was tagged out trying to get back to third base when he was confused apparently. By which of the two baseballs in right center field was in play. Two one was hit by uh, the batter. I think it might have been Murphy himself. And the other one came out of the bullpen on a wild pitch from a reliever. And onto the playing field. Grossman strikes out. You know that sounds like the spin of somebody in that bullpen after the fact uh, watching that ball come out of the bullpen. I have the hardest time believing that came as one of the pitches from one of the pitchers but uh, whatever they have to say for it. I mean it comes directly from the bullpen out towards second base. It did. Came flying out of that bullpen and that bullpen fence was high. Chris Carter is two for three. Carter's really improved his production with men in scoring position. He's improved a lot of things. Fouls that one away for strike one. Yeah, you hate to kind of lay back on Chris and say, well, let's let time uh, tell us where he is right now as a hitter because he has for a good long time now, since uh, all the way through July and here early in August, been a good looking hitter. But I, I think the track record says, let's give it a look. Revere in center takes care of it. And the Astros settle for one run, two hits, one error, and one left. It's eight to three Phillies.
big hit of the game. That came from the Phillies' Chase Utley back in the fourth inning. Chase got himself a big time swing. Here it comes as he launched one to right field. No doubt shot, a three run job. And that took a 5 1 lead at the time. In fact, 5 2 and turned it into an 8 2 lead for the Phillies. And really the big difference making swing in the ballgame. Utley's well, one for three tonight. And he'll be leading it off here in the home seventh inning. Mark Krause has stayed in the game. He is in right field. After pinch hitting for the pitcher. Downs. Downs in one inning. Line one hit, no runs, with no walks, one strikeout. Now it's Mike Fultonevich who made his major league debut Saturday against the Blue Jays. Very impressive. And he struck out Jose Bautista throwing 99 mile per hour heaters, Ash. Yeah, Phillies hitter, hitters better dial it up right now. Of course, the Phillies know what the, the big arms out of the bullpen look like. They've got a couple of themselves that we just talked about. But Mike Fultonevich in that first outing was all he's been billed to be. And he was finding the strike zone with the heater, too. Well, one to Utley at 96. Fultonevich is 22 years old. He was born in Sterling, Illinois. First round pick by the Astros in the 2010 draft. One ball, one strike. He was the first Illinois high school pitcher to be a first rounder since 01. Fouled away, and it's a one ball, two strike count. Last year, Mike had some games at Lancaster, but most of the season he pitched at Double A Corpus Christi, striking out 95 and 103 innings. So this year he was bumped up to Oklahoma City where he had a 5.12 ERA struck out 92 and 96 and two thirds innings. It's two balls two strikes moving right up the line up to 98 miles an hour now and we know that he can hit 99 even 100 miles an hour on occasions. Can he steadily go 97 and above as a one inning guy. It would appear that would be the case. Up the middle and past the diving petite. An ugly single gives him a two for four night. Last Saturday, Mike Fulton Evans made his major league debut. Facing the Toronto Blue Jays in one of the game's great power hitters, Jose Bautista, Joey Betts takes one high and another away. So it's 2 0. Oh. It's a hitter's count. Fastball blown by. Heat blown by. Eventually striking out against Fulton and the family there to enjoy it. But I think a lot of baseball fans also took that. And enjoyed it very much and hope to see a lot more in the future. Ryan Howard is next. And he lines one over shortstop in the left center field. Marisnik over to play it. Back to back singles by Utley and Howard to bring up Marlon Bird. We see how Fulty reacts to this. When you're blowing the fastball by hitters, there's no inclination to change anything. When the hitters start getting their hits off of you, then you might have this feeling of, well, maybe I need to make an adjustment. And I don't think you want to see Fulty adjust a whole lot. Yes, you want to see the breaking ball, but that fastball is going to live and die at times. Fultonevich made 17 starts and three relief appearances at Oklahoma City this year. Marlon Bird is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Astros came out with their players of the month for July. At Oklahoma City was lefty Kevin Chapman, pitcher of the month. That's ball one to Bird. Carlos Perez, a catcher, was the player of the month for the Red Hawks. Two men on with nobody out. Ten hits for the Phillies, nine for the Astros. It's two and zero. Oh. At Corpus Christi was Tyson Perez, pitcher of the month, and Telvin Nash, player of the month. Nash hit 3.28, 10 homers, 20 runs batted in. He had an OPS of 12.47. Bird starts and stops his swing. 
That's 3-0 to Marlin. Phillies drafted Bird in 99, then they traded him away in 05 to Washington. He looks at a strike, three and one. Had uh, some real physical difficulties in the minor leagues, three leg surgeries. After playing at Georgia Tech. Three and two for Fulton Evich. That fastball had a lot of sinking action. It really did. Don't know if he two seamed this or not, but he generally with the four seamer won't get that kind of action. He was ranked in the preseason the fourth best prospect in the Astros organization. The line over shortstop into left center field. I get a run home. Nine to three, Philadelphia. Three straight hits. Bird gets his 64th run batted in. One thing's for certain: when you've got a great fastball, you'll have your survival moments and even great success on the big league level. But big league hitters will also find a way to get to you, and that fastball gets handled pretty well. Three hits in the inning. You've got to have at least one other pitch to go with it. Brent Strom goes out. Well, that's a young pitcher that is not afraid to look into the eyes of the pitching coach and listen. Eleven hits for the Phillies, nine hits for the Astros tonight. Brady Sizemore is over two with a walk. He scored a run in the five run Philadelphia first. Finale of the series is here tomorrow night. Then the Astros come back home and open the homestand Friday night against the Texas Rangers. Colin McHugh and Roberto Hernandez here tomorrow night. Strike. Look like maybe Brent Strom reminded Fulton Evich that you've got to be able to show another pitch to make your fastball all the better. Good breaking ball to start things. And he comes back with another one and one. Two balls and one strike to Grady Sizemore. Sure looks like Fulton Evich is throwing some two seamers here in the inning. And boy, that can that can alter the release point. Altuve hits it on to Petit. Four six three double play. Two outs, Howard to third base. Come on out to Minute Maid Park this Friday. That's August 8th when the Astros face the Texas Rangers. It starts at 7 10 p.m. 10,000 fans will receive a cowboy boot mug presented by Xfinity. Afterwards, the game will be followed by spectacular fireworks presented by Marathon Oil Corporation. Get tickets at 1 877 Astros or at Astros.com. Will Nieves delivered a sack fly in the first. He is 0 for 2 tonight. Remember last night, Ash, we showed that photo of the promotional truck uh, fan giveaway for the New York Mets. With the Phillies emblem on the door? Yeah. Yep. A Mets fan, presumably, got a Phillies truck in New York. 
with the Phillies logo on the door of the truck. We had a picture of it last night. Here's the story tonight. Uh, it was just uh, human error during the packaging stage of production. And the Mets are apologizing that they gave out trucks of the wrong team. Now there wasn't an implication there that just one truck got out that way, right? A, no, there a were fan. There were several. So, but not everybody got that Philly truck. No. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and strike. <laughs> New York truck night presented by the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies. That's a first, isn't it? <laughs> Two and two, the count. I thought that was kind of cute. He have his fouls it back. Just about win next door where Larry Anderson's working. Jamie Moyer working over there tonight, isn't it? Well, there is a few doors down. Yeah, I did see uh, Jamie Moyer, former great soft tossing left hander. Jamie there with Tom McCarthy on yeah. Phillies TV on Comcast Sportsnet here in Philadelphia. This is the Comcast headquarters city. That's a swing and uh, he struck out. He's, he's displaying an argument there for the home plate umpire, Mark Carlson. But he's called for striking out. Now he's going to run. No, he's out. The ball hit him. He swung and missed it. And I think that's the ruling at the plate. Yes. It doesn't matter. You don't have to throw him out. The ball's dead at the point it hits his body. Yeah, he swung at it and it hit him, which is a strike. And in this case, strike three. So it's one run, three hits, and one man left for the Phillies. And it's nine to three, Phils. The top of the eighth in a moment. Altuve and the Astros try to escape from Philadelphia tomorrow night with a win against Ryan Howard and the Phillies. Three game live starts at 5:30 only on Comcast Sportsnet. And now tomorrow night's pitching matchup brought to you by Chevron. Care for your car. It'll be Colin McHugh back to the mound. Very good as last time out. Four and nine on the year. Much better than that on the hill. 332 the ERA. He'll go against a guy now known as Roberto Hernandez, who's six and eight on the year, 387 the ERA. Last couple of starts, he's been lights out 2 0 with a 119 earning. You say now known as? Uh, apparently, yeah. That, I think he's got an alias or two in there. Grady Sizemore has moved from left field to right field. Marlon Bird coming out of the game. Bird was one for three with an RBI. And uh, there's the new left fielder Dominic Brown batting ninth and the pitcher is the third person we're going to show you and he's about to work here in the eighth inning. Justin DeFreitas works to John Singleton Singleton's 0 for 3 with an RBI. DeFreitas deals and there's ball one. 
David Buchanan is in line for the win. It would be his sixth of the year if he gets it in six and a third innings. Buchanan allowed nine hits, three runs with no walks, five strikeouts through 102 pitches. 68 were strikes. That's a strike to even the count of one and one. Jake Diekman in two thirds of an inning allowed no hits, no runs. With no walks, he struck out one. DeFreitas among those who also worked in last night's game. Who didn't? Fausto Carmona didn't. Well, that's true. Fly ball to center field for Revere. That's out number one. Fausto Carmona. It was discovered was not Fausto Carmona. And he turned into Roberto Hernandez who yep. starts tomorrow night. But that can't be right. He was a huge prospect at one point. <laughs> DeFreitas is two and one, his ERA 2.70. Nine walks and 35 punch outs and 36 and two thirds innings for DeFreitas. Matt Dominguez looks at ball one. Matt doubled and scored in the fourth inning. DeFreitas is 26 years old from Ventura, California, an 11th round pick in 07 by the Phils. Pitched 58 times last year for them. He deals the breaking pitch and it's 2 0. Of course, we're talking about Roberto Hernandez who pitches tomorrow night. Used to be known as Fausto Carmona and he made the All Star team. He was also a 19 game winner as Fausto Carmona. He made the All Star team. Someday he's going to try to tell his, his kids and his grandkids that he was an All Star pitcher in the big leagues and they're going to say, but wait a minute. I. I don't see any Roberto Hernandez as an all star. That's going to be a tough story to tell. Pitch inside makes it three and one. Phillies 9 11 and 1, Astros 3 9 and 0. Game 2 of a three game series. It wraps up tomorrow night, then the Astros get going. Brief road trip. 3 and 2, the next one will be lengthy, Ash. 11 days, 10 games, I believe. Boston, New York, Cleveland. What's Just our buddy Blummer doing tonight? He's uh, preparing for that upcoming trip. He's been preparing for three weeks for that trip. He should be ready then. <laughs> Struck him out looking two outs. He was texting us last night about the 14th inning. I think he was just jealous. Yeah. By the way great guests hot topics and no holds barred debate. Kevin Eschenfelder serves it up fresh every single weeknight on Sports Talk Live at 5 p.m. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. Tomorrow night's guests are Nick Wright, Kim Davis and Will Bruin. Carlos Corporan's 0 for 3. We have breaking news from Julia. There's ball one. She's always alert for breaking stories around baseball. I can't wait. We're going to go to her right after this next pitch. Foul away. Julia Morales. Breaking breaking. News. Yes. That's right. Now Jared Cozart has been scratched from a second start with the Marlins. Uh, strained oblique. He's supposed to start tomorrow. So it sounds like he'll just skip a start. Not sure if he did it swinging the bat. Or running. Oh that's right he had a hit didn't he? he? Did. Mm -hmm. So yeah it could have been. During an at bat. He's been a much better hitter in the National League than in the American. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Well. Certainly not what the Marlins wanted to experience. Nor did that young man want to experience the color of lips he has right now. <laughs> That's a liner out to Revere in left center field. To end the top of the eighth inning in one two three fashion nine to three Phillies.
It's 9-3. Phillies on top. As promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game tonight. It's another one from Marissa Pyle. She's good about tweeting these in with a double selfie with a Zay Altuve there. Good stuff. Tweet your photo to hashtag CSNH fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. That's pretty cool of Altuve, guys. Oh, he does that all the time, as you know. Spends a lot of time with the fans. What do you think? He and J.J. Watt are the two most in-demand athletes in Houston right now. Might well be. I'm not sure that uh, he can push uh, an offensive lineman around like J.J., but he can sure swing that stick. 9-3 ball game as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Cody Ashey has struck out twice after the intentional walk. Mike fulton comes out for his second inning. In relief, it's been Peacock for five, downs for one. fulton hoping to work the eighth inning here in very good fashion and give the Astros a ninth inning opportunity for a huge comeback. That's ball one. The Nationals beat the Mets 7-1 to in Washington. They're now 10 games over 500. Chris Carter heads for it. Matt Dominguez has the angle. And that's one out. Dominic Brown. Found out he has tonsillitis. Been running a fever. He's had a sore throat. And he hasn't been playing a whole lot the last few days. Apparently he will have to have his tonsils removed after the season is over. At 2.30 he has seven homers. He's driven in 50. That's strike one to Dominic Brown. He has not started the eight games in a row including tonight. The last eight. Oh and two. I understand that tonsillectomy can be a little bit tough as an adult. Well I think you're right. And according to a story in the paper today. I guess uh, as adults mature their tonsils get smaller but his have not. One and two. Apparently they're needed for the digestion of dirt and such things when you're young huh. OK well yeah. Absolutely. Fly ball left center field. And that's deep Carter back. Two down. Fulton gets too quickly and moves along to face Revere next. Revere has three hits in this game. Doug Fester's 11 and 3 after beating the Mets for the Nationals tonight. LaRoche hit two homers, giving him 15. Espinosa, number seven. Mariners beat the Braves 7 to 3. Chris Young going to 10 and 6. He beat Julio Tehran. Ackley and Morrison went deep. Ball one to Revere. The Royals and Diamondbacks just underway. No score in the top of the first. That's a shot to center field. Marisnik backing on it. Long run here. Twisting. Oh, it gets by him. And it's loose on the track. Now extra bases for Revere. And he's in with a triple. Well, it looked as if Marisnik might be able to make a tremendous catch. But Revere winds up with his fourth hit of the night. Marisnik was playing shallow, and that left him with a long ways to go. Watch him as he goes back. He had an angle, but he got twisted a bit there at the end. He laid out, though, all out effort. But I, I thought as he started back, he had the ball out in front of him and then started to weave and bob a bit on the on the course. He might have gotten his glove on that ball. He did. Four hits tonight for Revere. That's triple number six for him. Jimmy Rollins is two for four. This one gets by, and Revere is coming in to score to make it 10 to 3 on the wild pitch. Well, one of those nights, double digit runs for the Phillies, and they are a club that has not been scoring a lot of runs. They were hitting 172 for the month of August when this game started.
Collins looks at it. It's one and one. Udley's on deck. Ten runs on 12 hits with one error for the Phillies. Three nine and zero for the Astros. Bit of a drop off in velocity this evening for Mike fulton as compared to the first outing. One and two. Corp hurting a little bit. Not sure where this got him. That was an off speed breaking ball. So he doesn't get the brunt of 98, for example. Right there. Just at the top of the knee. Strike three call. And that's the eighth inning. One run scoring on one hit. We move to the ninth. It's 10 to 3 Phillies. Sportsnet is presented by AT&T UVerse TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. Well, it's dance time here. The Phillies lead it 10 to 3. Their fans are dancing. And they think uh, that this homestand is looking uh, much better than a lot of their homestands this year. They're 23 and 33 at home, but about to win. They hope their second straight from the Astros. Pitcher number four is warming up. And he's a lefty we saw in last night's game, Antonio Bastardo. Bastardo had quite a night last night. Two innings, no hits, no runs, one walk, six strikeouts in two innings for Bastardo. Uh oh, it's Jimenez. Saw the number uh -oh. wrong, Ash. Cesar Jimenez. Number 56. I didn't see that number. We'll have to. Reevaluate. He's 29 years of age in his fourth game now with the Phillies. Four and a third innings is all he's tossed, allowing four hits, has yet to allow a run, so he's got that perfect Zippo ERA. Saturday, no decision against the Nationals. Two and a third innings, no runs for Jimenez. They do have the lefties in their bullpen, don't they? Four lefty relievers for Ryan Sandberg. Jake Marisnik gets it going. He is one for two with a sack fly. Towering pop. Ryan Howard. One pitch one out for him in it. DeFreitas went one hitless inning with the strikeout. Jimenez pitcher number four. He came up from Triple A Lehigh Valley August 1st, just five days ago, when Cliff Lee went on the disabled list. And for Lehigh Valley, he was three and two with a 1.45 ERA. He's been uh, with the Mariners and the Phillies in the big leagues prior to this year. Gregorio Petit has two hits tonight. That's ball one. The Rays beat the Athletics in Oakland seven to three to avoid a sweep. A win for Jeremy Hellickson. He's one and one. 
A loss for Sonny Gray. He's 12 and 5. 2 and 0. Oh. Oakland's being hotly pursued by the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Who began the day two games back. I think the big question with the A's is will they score runs now and be able to keep that pitching staff going? No, Yoana Cespedes. Two balls and a strike. Who do you think is going to take up the slack for them? Well, it's not like they don't have some guys that have had solid years. Uh, Josh Donaldson has probably been their best all around performer offensively. But I, I think that Cespedes has helped him and others in that lineup. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Moss is capable. Yep. They need uh, Josh Reddick to step up. He's had yes. a, a rugged last couple of years. He could be the guy who does step up. Dominic Brown back in left field. At the edge of the track, two down. Reddick could be their guy. Rangers beat the White Sox in Chicago three to one with two homers from Adam Rosales. Nick Tepish the winner beating Chris Sale. If Tali Feliz was saved number four. LJ Hose is the pinch hitter now. Batting for the pitcher Fulton Evich. With a 168 batting average he's delivered three homers including a game winner and he's driven in 11 runs. Mark Krause had a pinch hit in the. Seventh inning. Well, that's right. He's uh, he's batting for Mark Krause actually. Up the middle and that's on through in the center field. We promised earlier in the game that you would get it. It's Miller time and it's brought to you by Miller Light, showing you two more hits from Altuve and an RBI and a steal and a run score. Edge. Yeah, those guys giving chase for the uh, hit title and the, the batting average lead in the American League have to be watching the, the Astros lineup or the uh, box score every night, wondering how on earth do you catch up on this guy? And they got him one time, the Phillies did tonight. Bang, bang at first base. He can really go down the line. Can he get a third hit? He fouls it back. There's strike one. The Astros just got their 10th hit of the night when Hose delivered a pinch hit. So a couple of those for the Astros tonight. Looked like Altuve was going back to Old Faithful right there, trying to shoot one to right field. Padres beat the Twins in Minnesota five to four. Pitch from Jimenez is upstairs, and it's a one ball, one strike count. Seth Smith at his 12th home run. That was a 10 inning win for the Padres. Twins will be headed for Houston next week. In the air behind second base, three players out for it. Rollins. And in the ninth inning, it goes no runs, one hit, one man left. The Phillies have won for their second straight night. They had been shut out in back to back games when this series started last night. They won it last night, 2 to 1 at 15. They win it tonight, 10 to 3, Phillies.